Yeah, so I went back to, um, you know, the worksheet 4.5b and said, okay, let's go ahead and show you exactly what yours should look like. Um, 4.5b, solving a matrix, solving a system using an inverse matrix. I want you to be able to do it both by hand and with a graphing calculator. Okay, so this is the one by hand. Um, I, you need to be able to write as a matrix equation. And then be able to need to find your inverse. And then take that inverse times b, and then you're basically done. This one kind of freaked me out that we got decimals, but hey, that's the way it's going to happen sometimes. Not a big deal. Um, and again, we can double check this by plugging it back in. 13 um, and 14, I went ahead and wrote those out just so we can see exactly where my equations came from. Um, and I can definitely address any questions we have on that. After I wrote those, I just went ahead and grabbed my graphing calculator, typed it in, and was, was done. And again, hopefully. You guys now have an increased appreciation for that. Um, graphing calculators, if you've take one, taken one, I need it back. Okay, So make sure you put it back in the box sometime today. Um, and then um, we can use that and move on. There's one more way that I'm going to show you with graphing calculators, but um, I'm going to save that. We need to get this test done, and then we're going to move on a little bit as well. Okay. So, that quiz is going to be tomorrow. 3.7, 3.8, 3.7 is Kramer's rule, and 3.8 is inverse matrices and solving using inverse matrices. Expect there to be a graphing calculator portion and a non-graphing calculator portion. Questions? Okay. Right. You can keep that for your benefit if you want to look back over that, if you struggle with one of those. Okay. Um, today we're going to move on. Chapter 4. Okay. Um, we finished now chapter three, so it's time to move on. Um, it's about time to get some other information. Okay. So here's what we're looking at. I'm going to go ahead and do it with your pen. Yeah, I won't be able to fix mistakes, but that's okay. Okay. First of all, 4.1 is we're going to work on graphing y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We've done this before. Okay. We've done it before. We pre we we um, did it real quick in Algebra One, um, but usually that doesn't stick very hard with with students for whatever reason. So I'm going to kind of teach this fairly, what I consider fairly thoroughly, and not just gloss over it. Um, so, so first thing, this is what's called a quadratic. What um. Let's just go quadratic equation. Why is it called a quadratic equation? Because it's got an x squared term. Because actually, this, this thing has three different terms. It's got a quadratic term, it's got a linear term, and it's got a constant. Anything with a quadratic um, term is going to be a quadratic equation. Okay? These are always parabolas. Okay. Do you guys remember parabolas at all? What do they look like? Okay. 
Okay. So parabola, like you're saying, it's like say if I throw something, maybe the path of an object, something like that. Not the prettiest one. Okay. But there's a quadratic or parabola. Okay. Um, they can open up, they can open down, they can be skinny, they can be wide. There's lots of different things that parabolas can um, can look like. Okay. But there's a couple things that are always always important about them. And I'm, let's go ahead and do a quick anatomy lesson. Okay. If I have this parabola, there are important points. And important parts to it. So, what's this point here? Yeah, it's my y-intercept, okay? It's my y-intercept. What's special about the coordinates of that y-intercept? What's special about one of the numbers? Zero for which one? X. My X is zero, okay? And then my Y just has a value of some sort. We'll come back to that, okay? These two points here are my x-intercepts. Sometimes they call those the zeros or roots of my equation. Okay. What's special about those coordinates? The y is zero. Okay. Do you feel the midnight formula coming? Okay. <laughs> so, this point right here starts with the v. Vertex. And this right here, this, this dotted line, dotted line is not part of the graph, but it definitely helps us graph the graph. It's called the axis. John, did you get my email I sent you? Oh, I, I saw it when I did that. Oh, I think you'll think that's funny. <laughs> it has a little bit of history, a little bit of German, a little bit of World War II, and a, little bit of, and a lot of humor in it. Okay. Let me know your thoughts on it after you watch it. Okay. Of... Uh, Symmetry. Symmetry. Two M's. Okay. So those are the main main parts. Okay. If I ask you to find the vertex, there's going to be a process for that. We'll do here real quick. Um, but um, let's just do a couple graphing ones before we get too too deep into it. If I just do a very basic graph, y equals x squared, okay? So, y equals x squared is really very, very easy to graph. And it should be kind of your home base, if you will, of all of these graphs. So if I plug in 0, what do I get? Zero. Okay, so I get the point zero zero passes through the origin. Not all parabolas pass through the origin, but this one does. Okay, if I plug in one, I get one, and I plug in two, I get four, and obviously if I plug in three, I get nine. Okay. And in this case, the opposite side is going to be exactly the same, okay? Because the axis of symmetry is my y-axis. So if I flip this over to the other side, flip this one over to the other side, and, you know, hey, if I square negatives, I just get the same result. And the only thing I ask you to do about parabolas is make them nice and smooth if you can, okay? Now, this is where I've never seen a book address this, but I think it's so powerful. 
first of all, on a line, my slope is the same all the time. Okay? But in a parabola, the slope is constantly changing, constantly changing, constantly changing. And let's take a look at what's, what's happening. For my vertex, I go over one, up one. Okay. From there, I'm going to go over one, up three. From there, I'm going to go over one, up five. Gee, what do you think the next one would be? Over one, up seven. Okay. So it progresses by odds. So, the, so between 0 and 1, my slope is 1. Between 1 and 2, my slope is 3. Between three and four, or between 2 and 3, my slope is 5. And my slope changes all as we go. Okay? And the reason why that is is because if you take a look at it, look at how, how, how your numbers change when you square them. Increase by 1, increase by 3, increase by 5, increase by 7. It's just the natural pattern that forms when you square things. Okay? <coughs> so... That's a very, very, very basic graph, I would think. Okay? If I give you your vertex, I say it's y equals x squared, you can do a table or you can go over one up one, from that point over one up three, from that point over one up five, boom, boom, boom. Okay? So, if I make a little modification to this, y equals negative x squared, what's going to be the difference? It's going to go down. Okay? And all of this stuff you, we've actually talked about, but we need to pull this back in. Remember IHOP? We talked about that? Yeah. Inside horizontal opposite. Well, in this case, this is outside the squaring, so it's going to be a vertical flip. So this one just flips it down. My negative just flips it down. Okay. So I'm going to go over one, down one. From there, over one over one, down three, okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Not a big deal, okay. On the other hand, if I do something like this, y equals um, x squared plus two, okay, what's this plus two do? Up two, okay, because it's, it's a, it's outside of my squaring, it's going to do a vertical shift. It's going to move it up too. So you could think of this several different ways, but the best way is just go, you know what? The, everything's just been moved up too. So from there, we're going to go over one up one. From there, over one up three. Find a couple points, and we're done. Okay? So parabolas aren't this mis mysterious thing that we've never done before. We've talked about how to move things around. Okay? But here's one thing we need to take a look at before we go on anything more difficult. 2x squared. What is the 2 going to do? Well, the 2 is outside. That is going to be a vertical stretch times 2. So okay, how is this gonna how is this gonna look? Well, right now these parabolas all basically have the same shape. This one is just gonna be steeper and taller because everything's being stretched vertically times two. So here's what we do. We're gonna start at the origin. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this up a little bit. Okay. So we usually go over one up one over 1 up 3, over 1 up 5. Are we going to do the same thing here? No, it's times 2. So everything that has a times 2 here, we're going to go ahead and instead of go over 1 and up 1, we're going to go over 1 and up 2. We're going to take all of these times 2. So from here, I'm going to go over 1 up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Three, four, five, six, and you'll notice that, especially if you do some graph paper, you'll get something that's t taller or thinner. I prefer to think about it as taller, if you will. Okay? So we're not going to graph all of these, but just what do you think it would, well, actually, well, I'm going to do one more. Y equals, and I'm going to get a new sheet of paper.
y equals negative 3x squared. And then we'll do y equals 1 half x squared. Okay. So y equals negative 3x squared. This one, vertex is still going to be at 0, 0. We'll talk a little bit more about vertex later on. So what am I going to do? Go over 1, down 3. Why 3? Because it's 3. Because it's usually 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 5. We're going to take all these times my negative 3. So it's going to be negative 3, negative 9, negative 15. This is going to be really steep. Over 1, down 3. Over 1, down 3. Okay. Now to this side, over 1, down 9. It's going to be way down here. And then we're going to have one that's very, very thin. Okay. Honestly, this over one, the book never teaches that. I just do it to try and give you guys a little bit better way to graph things. Because otherwise, you're still plugging in numbers. You're still plugging in one, plugging in two, plugging in three, plugging in four. Ugh. Yuck. Okay. Last one, then we'll take a little breather here. One half x squared plus one. What's the plus one going to do? It's going to move it up one. Okay. This one going to open up or down? Up, because this is positive. So one thing we can do is we can go back to, um, <coughs> actually, I'll, I'll make a little summary here in just a little bit. So this one, we usually have over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5. How is this one going to compare? Is it going to be the same, going to be taller? What's it going to be? It's wider or shorter, because it's 1 half as tall. So usually it's over 1, up 1. In this case, it's going to be over 1, up a half. Over 1, up 3 halves. Because everything's half as much here. Over 1, up 5 halves. So let's graph this bad boy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So over 1, up a half. From there, over 1, up 3 halves. On graph paper, this is really nice. Over one up five halves. And you can see we're going to have the same thing across my axis of symmetry. Okay. Moved up one because the plus one. Um, and then half as tall. Okay, so a couple notes here worth mentioning. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. It opens up if a is positive. It opens down if a is negative. It's going to be thin if what? It's going to be thin or taller if a is Greater than 1. Good. Greater than 1. And I'm going to put absolute value on there because I don't care if it's 2 or negative 2. It's still going to be thin. Okay? It's going to be uh, short or wide if absolute value A is less than 1. Okay? So like 1 half. We noticed it was wider. Okay? Um, so those are all the things that we have so far to really think about. Okay. Now, you'll notice that on every single one we've looked at so far, we had an x, ax squared, we dealt with a plus c, we have not dealt with this plus bx. And that's what we're going to have to deal with now. That's going to move it left and right, but it's not as clear as you might think. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, this next part, don't write down. Okay, just think about this. I talked about this earlier. Said this point here was zero something, and these points here were something zero, and something.
something zero, okay? Well, this first part is really, really, really kind of nice. Well, it, it's really easy, actually. That's why you guys are like, yeah, it's nice. If I plug in zero for x, that's what this means, zero for x, what do I always get? If I plug in zero for x, what do I always get? C. So my y-intercept is C. That's worth noting. Y-intercept is C. So if you want to go back to your original drawing, we can put a C in there. Okay. Now this next part um, is going to be kind of, um, you know, we'll visit this here real quick. Do you guys remember the uh, quadratic formula? Negative B plus minus square to B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. You guys had to memorize that before you walked in the door? Okay. So let's think, think about that. We have X equals negative B plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We're not going to use that today, so you don't have to worry about that today. Okay? But what this is, is that gives you my x-intercepts. We're not, like I said, we're not going to do that today. But what I just want to use this for theory. So this point right here is negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Like I said, don't worry about writing this part down. It's just I'm trying to do some theory here. This one is negative b plus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay? And then we've got this axis of symmetry that is somewhere in between the two. Okay? How does this axis of symmetry relate to our x-intercepts? Where is it? It's in the exact middle. It's in the middle. Okay, so now think about this. You know, honestly, I've never tried this part with kids before, but think about this. Here I've got negative b minus this ugly thing over 2a. Here I've got negative b plus that ugly thing over 2a. So the one side is minus the square root. The other side is plus the square root. What's right in the middle? This minus is what puts me over here. This plus is what puts me over there. Is there any square root here? No. So if you think about it, the thing that's halfway between these two is going to be all of this without the square root. So this value of x right here is going to be negative b over 2a. Because it's halfway in between my two x-intercepts. Okay? So, what that tells me is how to find my vertex. Okay? So, <clears throat> so this you'll need to know. How to find my vertex. This is probably the most important part of the graph. Okay? <clears throat> the reason I did all these here before is some of them are very easy to find. If it's not been moved left or right, if there's no x term, just graph the dumb thing. Move it up. Move it up to and graph a parabola. Okay? Stretch it to and graph a parabola. Okay? This one here. Oh, flip it down and stretch it three. Graph a parabola. No big deal. But when we have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, when we have a term there, now we've got to enter a new realm. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to find negative b over 2a. We're going to calculate that. And that gives me my x coordinate. Of the vertex. Okay, so if that gives me my x coordinate and my vertex, how am I going to find the y coordinate? If I know an x, how can I find my y? Okay. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Okay, so then you're going to plug in negative b over 2a for x, and then 
your y, um, and that gives you your y coordinate. So, take a look at a couple examples. Y equals x squared plus 4x minus 3. Okay? This thing, due to the 4x, it's going to be slid left or right some way, shape, or form. Okay? If there wasn't a 4x, it'd be easy. Move it down three, graph your parabola. Okay? But in this case, we've got to find negative b over 2a. And here we have negative 4 over 2 times 1. I'm assuming that you guys remember how to find your a, b, and c. That's a piece of cake. Your a is what's multiplying times your, that's your quadratic coefficient. Your b is your, your linear coefficient, and my c is my constant. Okay? So that obviously gives me a negative 2 which is my x-coordinate. Not only is that, that giving my x-coordinate, but this gives me the equation of my axis of symmetry. So, now how do we find y? Plug it in, go! Plug it in for x. Use your calculator to square things, you should be ashamed of yourself, and you're going to get messed up. start sketching it. This one, is it going to be stretched at all? Is it going to be stretched vertically at all? Come on, give me some response here. Is it going to be stretched vertically at all? No. This one x squared. Okay. So go ahead and you should be able to go over, up, over, up, over, up, over, up, and be done. You can do it kind of going back here. So, what'd you get if you plugged in negative 2? Negative 7? Okay. So, let's check it. So, I get 4 minus 8 minus 3 equals negative 7. Good. Okay. So, boom, boom. Negative 2, negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Your life will be much better if you use graph paper. Okay. No doubt about it. So it's one of those famous teachers, do as I say, not as I do thing. Okay? So this one, x squared. So it's 1x squared. So from there, we're going to go over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 3. Then from 1 or 2, over 1, up 5. There's nice, pretty parabola. And I'm reflecting it over the line y equals x.
Okay. I've got another example slated. Well, actually, one thing too that we could that we didn't use. Hey, my y-intercept is negative three. My y-intercept is negative three. I could have plotted that over without doing my over and up stuff at all. What the book's going to have you would have you do is they'll say use your use your um, your y-intercept. Flip that over. Plug in negative one. See what you get. Plug in one. See what you get. Do a table of values. But I think our over and up is really kind of a nice, elegant way to do it. Taking advantage of that pattern of that sequence. Okay. Give me a give me a thumb scale where you're at. Okay. So here's what we're looking at. Um, you know, if we wanted to do another one. Uh, I don't really think that we necessarily need to, but um, go negative b over 2a gives you x coordinate. Uh, plug that in, gives you y coordinate, and then up and over, up and over, up and over. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to do page 210. I'm going to give you the rest of the time. You'll need some graph paper for this. 41 and 47, as noted on that other sheet, 41 is using Kramer's rule, 47 is using inverses. That was on that other sheet I gave you. Then we have page 224, 12, 14, 17, 18, 20, and 37. Go for it.